missed the, uh, the anniversary, the 40th anniversary, uh, maybe you heard my name mentioned that I was there from the beginning. Um, but that was not actually even the, the real beginning. But I'll tell you, let, let's read the scriptures first and I'll tell you. Let's uh, find our scripture today from Mark chapter 10, verse 46 to 52. And I will read from the NIV. And then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up. On your feet, he is calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Uh, that is the scripture which we will use to find what God is trying to tell us today. Uh, first of all, I want to bring congratulations uh, to the leadership for the 40 years of a great work in this part of the city of Nairobi. Although I was a part of the beginnings, actually the larger part of the 40 years I was away because I've been in the United States for nearly 28 years. So I was only in the leadership for about 12 years in the beginning before my family and I left to go and live in the United States. Um, but I, because I saw there are very young, many young people I want to share a, a testimony which many of you have never heard um, about my life. And uh, as part of the celebrations of the anniversary, I want to say my life has been shaped by the gospel. I, I be, became a believer when I was a teenager. And uh, when I got the opportunity, or God opened the, the opportunity, I started serving in the church. First of all, I served with the Swedish and Norwegian missionaries. Uh, it was almost what people call a coincidence. I was working in his Lee, and uh, I found a, a Norwegian missionary tr struggling, trying to speak uh, Swahili. Uh, he was preaching outside in, on the roadside, and I went and tr started to help him. I was still in high school at that time. And from that time, I became his translator. And that uh, launched me into ministry from that time. Then the Swedish and, and the Norwegians and the Swedish combined because they speak a very close language. The missionaries said they work together. So I was working helping the missionaries to plant churches and actually finally they planted one in the city and one in Riruta. The, there is what is called the Evangelical Free Church. Um, but as I was working with the missionaries, uh, I started also attending Deliverance Church right in the beginning, before, way back, the, the, that is many years ago. Uh, because I think next year they'll be celebrating 55 years. So we are talking of that time. Uh, and I'm trying to talk to the young people uh, to show how the gospel is able to sustain you and to launch you. Uh, the one thing I want you to remember, maybe when you look at your circumstances, you think it is dire and very bad. At that time when I was helping the missionaries and also at attended Deliverance Church right at the beginning, I was coming from a mud house. Matope, you may matope in Nairobi. I would take my one shirt and one, my one trouser, clean it and iron it, and I let a neighbor who lived near me uh, say, this young man is very proud, uh, because I would clean it and look at myself and, and then go to church. Nobody would know uh, that I was coming from Mumba Matope. But as I was reflecting on that, right now where I live, it's rated to be among the top five places you uh, the best places you can live in the United States to raise a family. So I want to tell the young people, don't worry so much about where you are now. God can take you to many places. 
uh, and, and, and raise you. So if I wasn't afraid, I, I, I just immersed myself in God, and the gospel uh, has shaped my life. And finally, as I continue coming to Deliverance Church, I realized the way the gospel was being presented was different. Whereas the theology was the same, but the way you present the gospel makes a difference. It can be the same theology, but the way you present the gospel can be different. The way it was being presented was that the gospel can empower you and change your life, not only for heaven, but for this earth. What people dismissed as a prosperity gospel, and I came to say there is no other gospel. There is only a gospel that prospers people. Because I could see from that time, even among the young people that came to Jesus, that God started shaping our lives and molding them and causing us to prosper and to grow in all ways. And that's why today I want to encourage the young people, don't look at where you are. Remain committed to this gospel because it's a transforming and a prospering gospel. Amen? Amen. The scripture that we read from uh, Mark chapter 10 verse 46, uh, chapter 10 verse 46, 52, is about a blind man who was healed by Jesus. And... One thing I want you to remember always when you read the scriptures is when you read a story, uh, remember that it is what the musicians call is curated. The, the, when you see like the playlist which was being led here, it was not by hit and run. I mean, they had sat down and curated the playlist. So the, 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 epi the episodes and the events recorded in the Bible were curated. They were selected. And John tells us in John 10, 20, 30 to 31, that when you read, don't think this is all that was there. These were selected so that you may believe, so that you may have the picture of Jesus was. So whenever you see an episode, remember it was selected and therefore try to see what, why was this episode selected? Because there are many things and many healings that Jesus did, but this particular one was selected, it was curated to be included in the playlist, to be included in the big picture so that you can really be able to understand how God works. The one thing I want you to note is, at the end of this, uh, uh, this story, Jesus tells Bartimaeus, your faith has healed you. Now, whose faith? Your faith. He could have said, the power of God has healed you. And indeed, it was the power of God that healed him. But Jesus chose to say, your faith has healed you. Yes, we know the power of God is the one that healed him. But remember, the power of God is always there. It's like when you have electricity in your own house. The power is always there. But what makes the difference is actually when you take an action and actually switch on the light. So the power of God is present. The power of God is there. And that's why Jesus is saying, my power has healed you. Your faith, your action, what you do is actually what makes the difference. Many people are waiting for God, but actually God is waiting for you and for me. So you see, first of all, the big picture, what Bartimaeus did. First of all, he's, he, when he heard about that Jesus was passing by, the first thing is that he had heard about Jesus. So he already knew what Jesus could do. So the first thing is to know. Do you know the promises of God? Do you know what God can do? Because if he did not know or he had not known, he would not have bothered to, he would have had Jesus is passing by, but he would not have bothered to take any action towards that. So by knowing, by having information, that is what actually makes you uh, uh, move to the next step. So Bartimaeus knew the power of God. He knew the, what Jesus could do for him. That's why the, when the moment came, he was able to take the next step. The second thing, he knew he had information about Jesus. We have to know the promises of God and know the power of God and what God can do before we can be able to receive the blessings that we are looking for. The second thing you notice he, he knew, not only did he know who Jesus was and what he could do, he actually believed that he himself could receive a healing. Because you can know someone, prophet so-and-so is helping people, 
but you might not think that you yourself could be held. You might think these are the promises of God. You might read the Bible, but you might think these are for other people. But when you know and you believe they are yours, that's actually what causes you to act. So you have to know, you have to believe, and you have to act. And these are the three things that Bartimaeus did. He first of all knew the promises of God. He knew the power of God. He knew what God could do. That is head knowledge. Then he had to believe in his own heart that he himself could be a beneficiary of these blessings. Because if he did not believe, you cannot waste your breath and shout at the loudest you could, saying, son of David, help me. Son of David, help me. Why would he waste his breath if he did not know that this Jesus would heal him, if he did not believe that this Jesus would believe him? And after he knew and believed, he acted. And that's the big picture of what Bartimaeus is teaching us this morning. That you have to know the promise of God. You have to understand them. And there are people who are learning bad things. And that's why they think the gospel does not work. That's why we have to, to sit under proper teachers to teach us how God works. Many people, Christians, are frustrated today. Because they are told, go into that forest prayer, and when you come out, you get whatever. Uh, you have to, to, to learn from proper people telling you how you, you receive the blessings of God. Because if we know the promise of God and understand how God works, and we believe him, we will receive. So, so we see the big picture of what and how God works. To know, to believe and to act. That's why Jesus told him, your faith has made you whole. It is out of that knowledge, belief, and action, that's what made the difference. The power of God was always there. There were other blind men who did not follow this path, and they remained blind. The blessings of God are there for all of us, but it is for you and me to make, take the steps, to know them, to believe them, and to access them. And that way, we will be beneficiaries of these blessings. And that's why I said, it matters how you present the gospel. And although these days there are many people who present the gospel, the transforming gospel and the powerful gospel of God, which changes our lives, not only our, our faith and our spiritual lives for heaven, but for this earth, the empowering gospel. There are many people preaching it there, but in those days, actually, there were few. And that's why when I went to Deliverance Church, I actually remained and, uh, and then when we came here to Kasarani, I joined the leadership. Because the way the gospel was being presented, I was already a believer, but I realized this gospel is not only for heaven, but it can transform your life. It can shape your life. It can actually, as a, a, a pastor, Moshigari was saying, it, it actually changes you. It transforms you and you become a different citizen. People see you, you just look like them, but you are really a different person are being shaped and directed by a different power. And that is what I like. Uh, so, Bartimaeus teaches a number of things to us. From this text, as I said, it's curated. It is selected for a reason. That it has lessons for each one of us which we can learn from this blind man and be able to walk in this path and receive a blessing just as he did. The first thing you notice from this text is that Batimia teaches us to be always on the lookout. He teaches us to be always on the lookout. Now, what opened the possibility of this miracle? Think about it. What opened the possibility? What ignited or triggered this miracle? It is that he heard. And remember, it was in the midst of a lot of noise. But he had, and he actually, out of all that no, no, uh, noise, he captured that which was beneficial to him. So he was on the lookout. And that is actually what opened the possibility of the miracle. That's how he picked the good stuff from the noise. And how, I don't know whether we, I can say we are unlucky, an unlucky generation, but we are a generation which is faced by very, a big challenge and information overload. The noise that we receive from social media, you might be in uh, five, six groups, 
those who are with you in secondary school, those who are with you in college, those who are with you in training, those workmates, church mates, and uh, if you are like someone I know, you are trying to respond to every nephew and every cousin who posts on Facebook, then a lot of your time is being taken. And there's a lot of information overload and noise. And we really need God to help us. That we can really be able, like Bartimaeus, to know what kind of information we are capturing if we are on the lookout. Verse 46 tells us, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving the city, he heard that it was Jesus. Even in the midst of that noise and in the midst of everything that surrounded him, he was able to pick what was important to him. Are you spiritually alert? Are you listening to God's voice amid is the noise of the world? Let me tell you something very important. Being alert and being able to hear what God is doing and saying is so important. Because that's how we actually hear where God is pointing us. Many times we struggle trying to find a way. But only if we could hear God and see what he's pointing us to. We, our lives will be much easier. The miracle and the miracle worker are always there. All that Bartimaeus needed is to hear and to know which, where to go. And I want to tell you, God is willing to bless you and to bless me. But we need to hear where he's telling us to go. He's, he, we need to hear the people he's pointing us to. We need to hear the direction he is giving us. You see, many times we want to do it. We are merit-based society. We want to try our own strength. I want to use my diplomas. I want to use my everything. But sometimes if you listen to God, he will go further than your diplomas and your degrees can go. He can show you better things than all the knowledge you have acquired. I know this because I have acquired a lot of knowledge. But in many times God blesses me even where nobody is asking you, for your qualifications. Just God opens a door and actually it's later on they discover you, are, you have been to school for a while. So if you can hear what God is saying, if you can see what God is doing, then we will be able, like Bartimaeus, be, uh, uh, to be on the lookout and get what God wants to give us. It is so true that God has provided for us and all we need to know is to know where to go. The Apostle Peter writing in 2 Peter 2, 1, 3, he says because of the connection we have in Jesus, in God through Jesus, God has provided all that we need in life, for life and for godliness. It means God has what you need provided for your life, spiritual life and for your life on earth. And all you need to know is to hear when he's directing you and where he's directing you to go. And Paul adds on this same subject, he says, I pray for you that your eyes might be opened, that you might actually see. That God, through our connection with God through Jesus, he has provided a great heritage for all of us if only our eyes can be opened. Therefore, if you ask me, it is so critical that we'll be able to hear and to see what God is doing and where he is pointing us. Because if we do, then we'll be able to get the answers that we need. You can see Bartimaeus was on the lookout. He maintained a posture of hope and expectancy. And we as people of God, people of faith, we must never give up hope. We must even, if, do not look at the circumstances. Look to God so that you maintain a and a, 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 a posture of hope and expectancy. And that's what will change even what you say when you are talking to other people. You'll not be talking of gloom and doom, but you'll be talking of a God who is able to change your situation, who is able to help you see. As they say, people say money has, uh, money has gotten lost, but they say money never gets lost. It only changes hands. So you do need to see where the money is going so that you can 
God can show you so that you go there. No money has been thrown in the pit. It is just changing hands. And God can put you in that line where it is changing hands so that you can be the one, one of the people receiving it. So it's not that new money will be printed or new money will be created. It's not that new land will be created or, or it is still there. But God has to help you and help me. That as we move, he can show us what is that that he has laid out for me and for you. And that's what Batimias did. He knew God could do it. He believed it. And he acted on it. And that is the part. There are many of us here who know and believe, but they are not taking any action. Are you afraid to knock at that office? Carry your brown envelope and knock at the office. You never know. It might just be the office. A lady was giving us a testimony yesterday, and she said she heard an announcement. She actually missed the church that day, and it was announced at church that there is a job at the church office. She was not even on church that day, but she was on the lookout like Bartimaeus. Someone who was at church, I think it was in Zimmerman, told her today they announced a job that is at the church office. And actually, someone had already been sent to take that job. But she arrived earlier before that other person. And uh, as soon as she arrived, the person who was in the office said, I, I heard there was a job announced in the church office. And uh, whoever the minister of the office, the officer who was there said, ah, okay, she, she was interviewed and given the job right away. Then the lady who had actually been sent to come and be interviewed for the job came and they met outside when the other lady had already taken the job. I said, I have come for that job. I said, oh, sorry, the job has already been. So when you are on the lookout, remember that lady was not even at church, but her eyes and her ears were on the ground. She could see what was going on. And the other lady who had been given the recommendation by the senior minister, the senior pastor, missed the job. So be on the lookout. Don't, don't, don't let uh, circumstances uh, uh, bring you down. Be on the lookout like Batimias. And when your time comes, be able to get your blessing. Tell your neighbor, Kua macho. Cultivate an awareness in your life. A young man recently had me, had me talk of uh, some projects I'm doing, and he was on the lookout. So he, he actually changed his schedule and allay, arranged to see, to understand much more what I was doing. That was a person who was on the lookout. And I, I want to encourage those who are young, and even those who are old, to be on the lookout. Opportunities always come disguised as challenges or hidden in the ordinary. People who just come, they greet you all. You say, oh, just, uh, you pass people just like that. Take an interest in people. Take an interest in the people who are with you in the cell group. I, I try to learn what they do. Try to see whether they can be part of the answer to your question. Because God, the people that God has brought in your life are the answers to your needs. Amen? Amen. Batimias teaches us to be on the lookout. Kua macho. Batimias teaches us the importance of reaching out and being connected. He teaches us that. And then in verse 47, he says, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy of me. He reached out. He reached out. He was not afraid. Nothing could stop him reaching out. When he realized that is where my help is at, he reached out. Now, the greatest gift that God has given you and me is the ability to reach out. You might be, have been trained in many things, but I want to tell you, whatever training you received, the greatest training you received and the greatest gift is the ability to reach out. As noted as, uh, by Peter, God has provided everything that we need. What we need is to reach out and receive it. Reaching out is the first survival kit that God gives us. Remember when a baby is born, it knows very little else. But it has a gift which nobody can take away from the baby. 
Whenever it has a need, it cries out. The baby cries out. It reaches out. It is the gift we receive when we are born. But when we grow up, we think we are smart. And we throw the greatest gift away. The gift of reaching out. I want to tell you today, if when you get out of this service, reach out. And you'll be surprised how quickly you will reach your destination. Reach out. Anybody who looks like he knows something, reach out to them. And tell them, this is what I'm trying to figure out. That is a gift you received when you were born. It is the greatest gift. It is a survival kit that you received for this world. If you can ask anywhere, I don't know, uh, tell me, anybody raise your hand. You have gone and you asked somebody for the way and they dismissed you. Who, whoever has ever gone and stopped someone and said, I'm looking for this and that's what, can you help me? And they sent you away or they rebuked you or they insulted you. Show your hand. That tells you that when you reach out, there are many people of goodwill who will want to help you and me. In fact, in church, we are looking for people to, to help. Sometimes we actually get into trouble by trying to help too much. Like I, I met a lady the other, yesterday, who was doing some other things, and she showed, there was a young man there. She's an old, a, a mature lady, she has sons like the, the young man. She had never met him. She said they usually help young men. So she started asking, where do you go to school? Where have you reached? Uh, what grade have you reached? Uh, and she started actually counseling the young men. So you see there are people actually who are willing to help. Some, some are even going to beyond, uh, before you even ask, they want to enter your life and help you. So I want to encourage you that to reach out because that is the greatest gift that God has given you and me, the gift to reach out. Whenever we needed something as babies, we cried out. So I want to tell you, cry, baby, cry. <laughs> Always. Don't throw away the greatest gift that God gave you when you were born. Reach out and you'll be surprised. And when you, are get, you get surprised, come to church and give a testimony. So that more people will get surprised at doing what God is telling us to do. You see, there is a lot of wisdom in the word of God. Great wisdom. Great wisdom. Reach out. That is the, guess, the greatest gift that God has given us. I want to urge you to use that gift. Now, the importance of reaching out is you actually reach out and connect. And actually, you become what you are connected to. Did you know that? You become, when you reach out, you connect with something, and you actually become what you connect to. You know why you become what you're connected to? Because that's what feeds you. As, and as they say, you become what you eat. So what you connect with changes and shapes your life. That's what you become. That's why if you join people who are doing certain things, before you even discover, you actually start doing them without having sat down and considered. You actually grow into it. You grow into whatever you are connected to. And that's why reaching out is so powerful. If you find people who are going where you want to go, join them, connect with them, and they will actually carry you with them to wherever they are going. So the greatest task you have, young person, old person, the greatest task and the greatest thing you can do for yourself is to connect with people who are going where you want to go. They will literally carry you with them. You can ride on their coattails. So, but Mia teaches us the power of reaching out and connecting. Because you see, he could not see, but he followed the sound of the, uh, of the people who are crowding, and, and, and some of them were not necessarily helping, but he followed up asking, Where is that son of David? And he was able to be helped. What you are connected to is what helps you. So whatever the greatest task we have, the greatest duty you have, is to choose who you, are, who you are connected to. What you are connected to is the vehicle, is the, the vehicle that you carry you to where you want to go. What you are connected to is what will carry you. It's a vehicle. That is what will shape your life and your future. Whether you believe me or not, what you are connected to is what will shape your life and your future. So by choosing you actually commit to a certain destiny 
By choosing what you're connected to, you, con you, you, you choose your destiny. You do, maybe you ask me, Pastor, how, how do I start connecting? How do I start reaching out? Jesus gives us in the answer in Matthew 7, 7, where he says, ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened for him. I want to give you a real story. When I was young, and I could not afford school fees, I told you I lived in a Nyumbaya, Matope. So I couldn't even afford the school fees. So, as I was praying, what came to my mind is to go to the Red Cross. When you don't have school fees, do you go to the Red Cross? Who, who amongst us here, when you don't have school fees, you have gotten school fees from Red Cross? But that's what came to me. So I went to the city. They, they were... I think they are in the new the place where there is the, the place where the parliament, where they have their lounge, where the MPs have their lounge. Behind there, they used to have an office for the Red Cross. So I went and knocked the door. And uh, the lady who was there was uh, an, an Indian. She was the secretary. She was sitting in the front office. And I told her, I have no school fees. Uh, and as I told you, whenever you ask for help, nobody will throw you out. The, the Indian really told me they don't give school fees, but she had a rich brother, her own brother. So she wrote me a note to her brother. And she gave me a note to go there, and I got the school fees from her brother. <laughs> so you actually connect by doing what Jesus said. You ask and it will be given you. You seek and you will find. You knock and the door will be opened for you. Blind Bartimaeus could have sat out there saying, I'm blind. I'm marginalized. Everybody sees me as handicapped. And he could have sat there and said, I'll do nothing. Uh, poor me. Poor me, Bartimaeus. Maskini mimi. Poor me. But he actually overlooked his weaknesses and what, how people looked at him. And he went out and asked for help. Said, son of David, son of David, help me. Son of David, help me. My minutes are going quickly. Let me go. But Emias also teaches us to seize every window of opportunity. Now, you notice the scripture says Jesus was passing by. Jesus was not staying in that city. Uh, 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 this guy, Bartimaeus, did not have the luxury of waiting and saying, I'll go on Friday. He had to act quickly and seize the moment and receive the blessing. And I want to speak to those who have never received Christ as your Savior. You are hearing me talking about my life history from when I was young and how the gospel this gospel that we are speaking has shaped my life and blessed my life and my family. And you are there. I want to, take, to tell you to seize the moment. As you listen, say, I want to receive that same gospel. I want to receive that same Jesus. But in me as knowing that Jesus was passing by, seize the moment, he cried out right away. He did not wait. He did not have the luxury to wait. Jesus was not living in that city. It was a window of opportunity. And opportunities have a very short time span. They come and go. That's why we call them windows of opportunity. If you're not on the lookout, like that lady. Remember the lady I told you? She realized this job is not going to be open forever. And she actually was the first person to arrive at the interview. The other lady came in luxury. She had been recommended. She came in luxury and... You can see actually she came late because the office had already been opened, an interview had already been conducted, and the past, the other, this other lady was being sent for orientation. So you can see she actually came in luxury. She took the luxury. She came at her own time. Opportunities don't go like that. They, you don't have the luxury. So when you see at the moment, you see God is moving, take 
the opportunity and seize the moment. But Timias also teaches us that when you are pursuing God's blessings, there will be opposition. Life is never smooth. There are people who are telling him, stop the noise. You're making too much noise in this meeting. But I want you to note carefully, the more they try to stop him, the more he shouted. And I want to tell you, whatever obstacles and oppositions you're facing in life, the more they close doors, the more you knock the doors. If, if they had closed the door at the Red Cross, maybe I've go, I would have gone to the next door. I don't know whose office it was. But I would have continued knocking doors because I was determined that I'm going to go to school. So, whatever you are determined to do, knock on doors. If they shut one door, say hallelujah, God has another door for me. And go knocking doors and you'll be surprised one door you go. They'll tell you, I might not be able to help you. Like I just received a, a message on WhatsApp from our church. Uh, and there was a lady actually requiring to work for the church 20 hours free. And out of that, we write a letter and it should receive certain benefits from the, from the government. So I told her, I told my, my uh, associate minister, um, we might not have 20 hours, but I know somebody who can give her 20 hours. So sometimes you, you ask, she, she was asking, we have never done it. She asked something which has never been asked. Nobody has ever asked me, give me a letter to volunteer in the church and then I will get certain benefits. But when she asked, I started thinking, I said, this is one of uh, a person who attends our church. I'm not just going to dismiss her. I'm going to rack my, I didn't actually rack my brain. The Lord just gave me the, the solution for her. I said, we, we don't have the hours, but we have somebody we can recommend you to. So many times as you knock on doors, God will send you to a person who will help you. He will send you to a door that will help you. As I finish, Bartimaeus teaches us to have a clarity of vision. Jesus asked Bartimaeus, what would you want me to do? He was very clear. Rabbi, I want to see. You have to have clear, of, clear vision of what you want. Do you have a clear vision of what you want to do with your life? Do you? If you don't, how can we help you? How can I help you? If you don't know where you're going, how shall I help you to find the direction? Do we know what we are seeking from God? See, when you are clear where you're going, what you want to do, that gives you direction and motivation. So we have learned from this blind man several things. To be on the lookout. To keep hope and expectancy alive in our hearts. Because Jesus is passing by. Because your blessing is next to you. Reach out and connect because you will become what you connect with. Seize the moment. You have, don't have the luxury. Jesus is passing by. Never give up. Never let Fear, never let hesitation or procrastination hold you back. But Emias did not have the luxury to say, I'll go on Friday. Jesus was passing by. Many opportunities are only a window. And finally, have a clear vision. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way you have spoken to us through your word where you have spoken, teaching us through the story and the miracle of Bartimaeus. And we might not be blind physically, but we are surrounded by needs and challenges. And God, using these lessons, we can find a way. We can find a way to connect with what the blessings you have for us. I don't know what, uh, whether you are facing a challenge or you have, uh, um, you have a, a big thing you are praying for, something you want God to help you. I want you to mention it to God as I pray this prayer. 
Our Heavenly Father, we bring our petitions to you. Mention it to the Lord. Knowing that God, you have an answer. You have the answer. You have the supply. You have the miracle of healing. You have the open door. Only that we need our eyes to be opened that we can see it. Only we need to hear that you're passing by and connect with you that we may receive. We therefore pray, even as Paul prayed, that our eyes might be opened, that we might be able to see the glad blessings that you have for us. In Jesus' name, let's give the Lord a mighty, mighty handicraft offering for speaking to us and telling us that he cares for us, he loves us, and he wants to bless us. He has a store full of good things. Amen and amen.